Alrighty. Hey guys. So NHL 21 season is going to be on us in one day. Game start tomorrow. So we're just going to do a quick analysis of everything like we do at the start of the season. Who we like for the Stanley Cup, over undervalued teams, the new divisional setup, which is obviously huge. Um, a quick recap on the 2020 season, where the season starting from a Power 16 rankings point of view, the Stanley Cup bets we're going to make, spoilers, um, why we're bull bullish on Panthers and this is meant to be Avs, and why we're called on a few other teams, and then a bit of a note on the season win totals, which I've just pulled from Circa as well. So just a quick one. Obviously, last season, for everyone that was involved, we had a monster win, um, biggest win of my career. And you can read all about this here. This was written on the third. We managed to time entry pretty well, not perfectly. Um, but the price we got was insane. Um, plus 1,600, 16 to 1 on bet online, which was just wrong. Um, I know a lot of people got 1,400 as well. The whole reasoning and everything is here. It was obviously to do with this. Three games back, they were sixth in the Atlantic, but down by three points. And they ended up coming second to a monster Boston team. You can see differentials here. This was just a really nice timing of everything. They lost three games by one goal, one in overtime. You can read this whole, I'm not going to go through it, um, but it did look a lot like 2018 and it finished exactly the same. So honestly, just out of nostalgia, winning that much, we had five units at 16 to 1 and most of our unit plays are halves. So just to put that into perspective, we did hedge out, um, but we ended up winning. I didn't want to update this post because obviously people would think that it was not actually written on the third then. But essentially, come over to Ghost Betting, ask the guys what happened. It was a it was a very interesting road, kind of scary. Some late nights in there as well, overtimes early on. But we got it done. Um, and yeah, it was honestly, it was one of the nicest bets we've ever had. But it's not going to be that easy. Tampa Bay are obviously not going to be 16 to 1. I'm going to just use Bet365 for the future prices. Please do not use Bet365 only. They have okay markets on some stuff. Their golf is pretty good. Their cricket's all right. But like most of the stuff is going to be weaker prices than Bookmaker, Bet Online, Pinnacle, if you have access to that. Use those if you can because you're going to get way better prices. Okay. But just the UX, I just like for Bet365. Okay. So that's kind of last year. Everything went right in the end. It was a bit sweaty, but we got it done. So it's not going to go that well again, at least not straight from the start. But a play of this magnitude, when you get in the same price as the Sharks, which I'm not even sure they qualified. Um, and then obviously Dallas was 1600 as well. Another good bet would have been Vegas at 14 to 1. But we'll see what shapes up in the early part of the season. Bet online, although it's a great site, usually have good futures prices for the player so you know obviously a little bit weaker from a market standpoint um but this season we'll discuss who is going to look for like columbus at 80 to 1 is a good player as well anyway for anyone who hasn't read that this is the url i would highly recommend it, it kind of gives you a look into how we think about everything okay second one divisional setups so these are the new nhl divisions as of the year of COVID. so not too much to discuss um obviously you can see matchups like you've got the north which is i don't know why they didn't just call it canada basically um but there's a few things that i like so i'm very bullish on edmonton i know a lot of sharp sports betters are bullish on montreal as well i'm not a huge fan of the canadians just yet we'll give it a month and we'll see what happens but all in all this isn't a hugely strong division you have probably the weakest division, I'd say, um, but I'll double check now and just see what happens. Um, we'll discuss a few of these in a second. Um, give me one second. Okay, so eventually you you want teams that match up well inside their division. So because the playoffs pretty much now are you know divisional first, you want teams that will win against specific other outcomes and 
ideally just an easy division is the, the, the easiest way to put it. So in the north, for example, I know Vancouver got into the playoffs last year and did well, even though they had some unlikely results based on statistical outcomes, like expected goals, they shouldn't have won a lot of their games. Um, but obviously a lot of people are bullish on them. We're pretty cold on them, or well, I'm pretty cold on them. Ottawa obviously in a rebuild, and then you've got, I'd say, mid-range teams in Jets, Leafs, who are usually overvalued. If we have a look at this, you can see Leafs are fourth favourites above Bruins, which is just a crazy price. And that probably shows some of the divisional edge they have. <clears throat> so divisional uh, future bets are next week in video two, so I won't touch on that too much. I just wanted to make a note of setups. So here you've got a really, in my opinion, you've got a really top heavy division. You've got Vegas and um, Colorado. I think that's the one, two. I don't think Blues get into this. We'll discuss where I think the market is overvaluing teams in a second. Um, and then you've got pretty much three or four rebuild teams. You've got the Ducks, which is a rebuild, the Kings, which is the rebuild, the Sharks, which pretending they have one more year, but is essentially a rebuild. And then we've got a couple of mid-range teams in the Wild and Yokes. Um, I think Arizona is worth a look this year, but they were on the radar of people last year. So they're probably going to be slightly overvalued going into this, whereas Vegas, because they got knocked out before the final, they probably are undervalued slightly. And even Stars last year, statistically, if that series was played again, I don't think Vegas lose that. Then let's skip the central for a second and go to the east. This is by far the strongest division. I think Buffalo are a buy this year, or I'm bullish on them. New Jersey, again, a buy. But because this division is so tough, you've got even, there's a few people who think Rangers is a buy this year. So you've got potentially like six teams in with a chance. Like obviously Buffalo probably aren't going to do much, but you've got Bruins, Devils, Islanders, well coached, you know, hard fought series last year. Um, Rangers, Flyers, one point they were favourites to win the Stanley Cup. Then Penguins should bounce back, Capitals should bounce back as well. So you've got all these teams that are like historically good. And even last year, a lot of these were good. Um, but because of that, this is kind of a little bit of a fade. Because this division is so tough in comparison to the other two or three, it should be a fade. Central, again, there's a couple of teams that are in a full rebuild. Chicago, Detroit. You know, Detroit is the worst team in the league by far. Um, obviously, Ottawa's a little bit as well. But with the structure of this central division, you've got Tampa, Nashville. I'll talk about Florida in a second. Stars, I'm a little bit cold on this year. I don't think they do much. Columbus, I'm pretty warm on. So quite bullish on them. And then Canes are a good team. They're probably about right in the market. And then Chicago's a fade. So you've got maybe one, two three, four buys here. I'm going to miss Nashville. I don't think they do much this year, but they're not a complete fade. Um, and then here you could have, you know, six or seven, but as a result, they all cancel each other out to a certain degree. But I'll talk about divisional uh, bets in the next video. So that's just the setups. Super 16 power ratings. So obviously this is what the NHL does. Um, no surprise, Tampa Bay first, 199. And then you've got Colorado 198 and Vegas 179. I think these top three are actually correct, but potentially they should all be the exact same number. So if we have a look here, we've got all three, and they are essentially, you know, 6.5 to 1, 7.5 and 8. So in other places, you could probably get 8 to 1 pretty simply. And they should be a long way ahead of everyone else, in my opinion. So if you had to make a bet now to put you know, your entire bankroll on, you're pretty good with one of these three teams going to the Stanley Cup, okay? And if you can get plus 100 on a weird prop bet of that, fine. Obviously, you're so far away, I don't recommend doing that just yet. So those three, I agree with the market. Next, I, I tend to be really, really cold. So I'm super cold on the Blues. Reason is they're aging. They lost Pet Petrangelo this year. Um, but obviously they did get Tory Krug. I don't think that's a like for like though, even though he is obviously pretty good and a beast in Colton Perenko. 
this Vlad has been obviously insane through the years, but like he's been injured so much recently, he's kind of in the same boat as Stamkos. Like if you add Stamkos to Tampa Bay, like fully healthy with John Cooper, a superior coaching staff in my opinion, you they should be top. They should be favorites, like ahead of uh, Colorado as well. But with him being like, you know, kind of off. I don't see how St. Louis get enough goals. So defensively, they're pretty solid, but they're more of a, you know, under team, generally under 5.0, under 5.5 through the season. So if that had to blind bet that, St. Louis defensively is going to be strong, but to win a Stanley Cup, I don't think they have enough. So, you know, if they go all the way and do it again, fine, but I'm way colder on these. I think these should be up near 25 to 1, and they're at 18. <clears throat> Next. Philadelphia. So again, good. Carter Hutton, obviously, pretty good last season. But as a result, I think there's a regression here. I don't think this team has enough talent to do it again. Their core, especially offensive players, are aging. So I think this is just a lot of regression for Philadelphia. They're 14. Again, I wouldn't take that. Washington. Love Washington. It's a team I quote unquote support, but obviously that doesn't really exist with Sports Bay. Um, Obviously, Henrik, I didn't, this was one of the ones where because the media was so up on Henrik, you know, the king going to caps, I actually didn't like it. But obviously, he's getting heart surgery. We hope he's going to be all good. But this means that they have pushed um, Samson off to number one. Okay. And Craig Anderson, I didn't even know Craig Anderson was up there, but those two are fine. And I think it actually works out better. So, I'm probably on the market with the Capitals. 18. I probably wouldn't take 18, 20. But if they drift off to 25 and they're looking okay through the season, it might be a buy. But as it stands, not cold, not hot. Dallas, super cold on Dallas. Um, it's just regression. So they, and they've had COVID issues already. And it, we're not even started the season yet. So super cold on Dallas. Again, just, it's a no. Um Boston are always a good team, but the problem is they don't match up very well against other people. This is kind of why I like Tampa. Tampa match up really well against Boston and against the Penguins, and even the Leafs to a certain degree. So, like, you're talking about these three teams that are all in the top, what, seven favorites that Tampa match up well against. That kind of leads you to a, a fade on Boston. I do think Boston are live for the division, but we'll talk about that more next week with the divisional futures. So I'd rather play them on a divisional future rather than a Stanley Cup future. Toronto Maple Leafs, with the division, I, again, think they're live, but they're not live for the Stanley Cup, and they should definitely shouldn't be 11. They should be in that 18 range, along with, um, well, along with the Stars, even though I don't think the Stars deserve to be there either. So this is a fade for me. Um, and again, like, these people don't add much. And I know that's harsh, but like Joe Thornton's a thousand years old. He was incredible. He's now not. Um, Morgan O'Reilly is obviously, you know, solid. But it, yeah, it's just a sell for them or a bearish for them, sorry. Carolina is worth a look. Um, they've been coached really well. They play the right way, especially playoff wise. Um, but again, at the price, 18, I kind of want to see that go out to 25. And then that would be probably a buy. They are pretty, not a public team. Nobody's going to bet on them. But statistically, they always look better than they are because they take so many shots and they sort of quote unquote crash the net. Um, they show up higher in people's models, especially for statistical analysis. So if you have a model that has expected goals and you don't refine it by location of shot or player quality of shot. So like, for example, the common example is like, if you have, you know, Ovi in the office or you have Stamkos in the slot, those two have an expected goals of say 0.4. Whereas if you have a shot from some random guy from the point, that, that shouldn't even be 0.05. That should be even lower than that. And if you don't, sort of analyzed by that point of view you're going to have a lot of 
statistically irrelevant data and you're going to have Carolina always coming up the top of you know models for games they should win when in reality they obviously aren't going to win every game they play Vancouver again a little bit cold on Vancouver um, what's the price 28 is low though so maybe a look but honestly it's just a pass Islanders I don't mind they are well coached um, and Oh, okay. I didn't didn't see that. So Johnny Boychuk. So this is probably about where they should be if they're in the 20, yeah, 22 range. Again, if it drifts out to 25, it's worth a look. But as is, probably just a pass for now. But we're not cold on them. Penguins, again, they're going to be overrated slightly. Um, Jake had a good season when they won the cup, but since then he hasn't looked as good. So he scored blah, 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 blah. But again, just not really a fade, but at 16, it's just a no play in my opinion. Oilers. So I think Oilers with, oh, okay, that's annoying. So Oilers with a full healthy team are competitive, especially in the West, but Again, this is more of a, actually 18, hmm, okay. This is worth a look. We'll discuss this more next week because divisional bets, obviously, you need to get on earlier to get a good price. Stanley Cup can wait a little bit. But what is the 18 is worth a look. If you like them, go ahead because generally defense will get better um, as obviously their younger players get older. And I don't, I don't really think there's many strong teams in that division. Obviously, you've got Calgary, which is decent. But like, if you're looking at just the, the odds here, you've got what Leafs, and then it goes down to Oilers in second, I believe. So if you're getting Oilers at 18 to one, and they maybe can win the division and have the top seed, it's worth a look. Canadians. You know, obviously that those two goalie pairings is, is huge. Um, I don't think Corey Perry is worth much nowadays. Decent for depth, obviously, but not great. And I just think they're overrated by the market. Like, they're a decent team, but at 22, I'd want to see more. Like, they squeezed into the playoffs last year, um, obviously with the, the weird bubble situation. Otherwise, they weren't, they weren't doing much. And Columbus, this is a team I actually quite like. Like... They went to five OT, OT with the eventual, you know, Stanley Cup winners. Um, and if that game goes the other way, like you might be looking at a seven, a seven series. And they obviously beat uh, Tampa 4-0 in the year before, which was just the craziest thing ever. Um, this is a team I like. I like this is a buy pretty early for me. At 35, if you can, you can probably get 40, 45 at some other places, maybe even 50. And if you can get 50 on them preseason, like they're well coached, they're almost live. They need a couple of extra pieces. But if you get a goalie that gets hot at the right time at 50 to one, like it's it's a buy, in my opinion. I'll just check a couple more that weren't in the top few then. Rangers, most people like the Rangers in this situation. I'm still cold on them, so that's a pass. <laughs> Jets at 30, you never know what's going to happen with the Jets, so this is probably a buy further in the season, so it's a pass for now. Vancouver's a pass, Nashville's a pass. Flames might be worth a look. They need a little bit more depth, though, so it's a pass for now. Blue Jackets is a buy. Panthers I'm going to talk about separately. Yotes look good, 50. I would rather have Arizona over San Jose. And then this is a fade. Mm, pass. These two may be worth a look, but not yet. And then pass, 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 pass. Okay, pretty simple. Florida Panthers, you can get 50 to one other places, I know, because I have it already. Um, but first time you got bets, also bullish on Panthers and Naps. So it's a little bit annoying because there's one team that's 40, 40. I'll say, if we say 50 to one, 50 to one. And then the top three favorites, you know, there's not really much you can do there yet. Um, so how you can play this if you want, is with season win totals. So I saw this posted by someone, um, Circa Sports. If you don't know, Circa Sports is the only place that has decent limits in fucking the entire Vegas nowadays. Um, and this is to obviously win, uh, sorry, season points. It's essentially number of wins. And obviously you have 
uh, OT nowadays as well. So things I wouldn't take, I wouldn't take Lightning 76, even though I'm bullish on this team. I would take Bruins 70, and I would take uh, Devils and Sabres is worth a look as well, but that's not my core play. This gap is way too big, in my opinion. Like Euler 64 is a play. Uh, um, these two are not a play, but if you see, that's how I think that will maybe these two will flip. This will be very close in my opinion. But this is this is what I see happening. Avalanche one or two, Golden Knights one or two, and then a big drop off to everyone else. That's probably the strongest look of the entire season, to be honest, is that blues, wild, yotes, sharks, ducks, kings all fall off, fall off a cliff, basically. Whereas a lot of this is showing that, you know, blues are 18 to 1. Well, I think they should be down in this range, personally. <clears throat> okay, so Senators 46.5, that's very low. Red Wings 47. Black Wolves, Blue Jackets. So Blue Jackets over as a play. Panthers over as a play. Stars under as a play. Everything else is a pass. And if you have any specifics you can ask me about, go for it. I probably wouldn't touch any of these lower teams because you wouldn't, you don't really know what you're getting. Like Ducks 54 could be a fade as well. That seems quite high. Um, wings could be shocking again. I think Devils is quite a harsh price, 51 and a half. Like are you saying they only get four and a half more points than Detroit? Mm, no. But again, I would rather take a Devils minus four versus Detroit than in this situation. Because with obviously everything going on, you don't really know what's going to happen. Okay. So yeah, if anyone has any questions about this or they want to actually make any plays, feel free. The main bets we're going to make today or that we have made already, is these Stanley Cup bets. I'm going to take Tampa and Vegas now, just because I think Colorado will drift out a little bit. So you can get eight and nine to ones for these two. If you shop around, you might be able to get a little bit more. I'm not sure what Circa Futures is offering. Uh, let me go and check that officially. Okay, so I couldn't find Circa's odds for some reason. But, I mean, just by shopping around one other site, you've got Vegas up to plus 900. So this is obviously huge if you're going to put one or two units down preseason um yeah it's just it's just a given shop around i'm not going to take colorado yet i'm probably going to wait for that to drift and if they never drift then we won't be taking them to be honest and that'll just be a miss but lightning at 900 you can get 10 to 1 in other places but you can see we've got better prices for these two already and vegas 900 as well so 9 to 1 for both also florida is a play this is just a personal preference for me this is the 50 to 1 i was on about um again wouldn't take this for much half a unit and then you can take them more on things like win totals individual matchups um i just think i'm bullish on this team more than the market same for the blue jackets as well which are 40 to 1 here so again you get another what five which is going to be huge if they get pretty close so that's the the four i'm looking at preseason. There's going to be a couple more, obviously. This is more on this next week, to be honest, and more on this next week. Avs, I'm not sure you can take a plus 650. That's just too short. Obviously, offensively, they are crazy good. But something can happen. People will get injured. Whereas, you know, with Tampa, you saw their best player get injured, and they still didn't even need seven games to win the Stanley Cup in a COVID-ridden year. So coaching and matchup-wise, they do really, really good. And obviously, goalie gets hot, pretty much unstoppable. So that's going to do it for the first video. Pretty much all done. If you have any questions about anything or you want my opinion of a team going into the season, let me know. Obviously, game-by-game -game data is very, very different. We use market information for um, specific plays. As Ghost Betting Premium, obviously, people that already know who are already here, great. We've been on a good run to start, 11th of Jan. Um, up 16 units it doesn't usually go this well just a heads up for anyone expecting like a unit a day that's not the case we usually aim for about 10 to 15 units a month um, and that's it for more information just go to ghostbangtips.com and any questions let me know okay perfect thank you